it safe to say this team lives and dies by the three? Uh, the team we're getting ready to play? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly not us. <laughs> you, see, uh, yeah. you know, they've, they've got the two big monsters inside too now. They don't throw them the ball as much, but they're a problem because they're both big wide bodies and they can score. And really when you break it down, Taylor, number one, is a guy who he gets a lot of layups off the dribble. I mean, he gets a lot of layups off the dribble. He's a, he's much he's a younger version of uh, Boatwright at, at Connecticut. He can really beat you off the dribble. So, um, yeah, they make threes, but you better be conscious of, of keeping them guys, the three little guards, out of the lane. They struggle on defense and off the on the boards, though. Statistically, statistically, they do. And you know, watching them last night, I, they were. Um, for a lot of the game, I thought they were better defensively against Connecticut than they had been. Uh, but you know, and they're a young team, so they're going to get better as the season I think goes along. Um, rebounding wise, or you know, statistically, you certainly look at them. But again, they and part of that's probably because they start with three small guards, and they don't really have a you know they got their two big guys got to rebound it, and if they don't, then they don't they don't have you know uh, they don't have a six five even or a six seven guy like we do in the wings. So. Um, I think that's probably part of the rebounding problems. If Troy Copain scores 11 points to, uh, Sunday, you got a double-figure score. Is that a big deal? <laughs> I, I won't know what to do with the double-figure <laughs> score. Um, you know, I mean, I hope he scores more than 11, to be honest with you. Uh, but so far, you know, we've been tough to guard, I think, because you never really know where it's going to come from. You know, you know, on a given night, you, know, you can't say, we'll take this guy out, and then you're going to win. And um, I would like to get, ideally, what I would like to get is about four guys in double figures that tend to 12 months. I bet you would. That'd be great. <laughs> you had a couple great. road losses in a row. Um, nice road win early at NC State. But how do you un how do you solve that? I, is that part of a go win Sunday? You know, part of being a young yeah. team. Or you solve it real easy. Go win Sunday, yeah. and you get another road win. I mean, I'm not being. But why does that? You know, how do you account for that? Well, I mean. You know, we've played three road games. Obviously, we played really well at NC State. Um, when you're young, you have to sometimes you have to learn how not to lose before you can win. And in two, the two road losses, 17 and 20 turnovers is why we lost. It, it, it doesn't matter who you play or where you play. It's how you play. Road or home. It doesn't matter who you play or where you play. That's how you play. And in those two games, we didn't play very well on the offensive end. Threw the ball over the gym, you're going to get beat. If we'd, have, if we'd have had 20 turnovers at home against the, either the last two opponents, we'd have lost at home. How much did it show you about this team that they had a bad first half turning it over and then they were able to get it back on track and, and keep that number down in the second half to pull away? Well, I mean, let's say we strongly emphasized it at halftime. <laughs> uh, but. You know, I, I'm not one to sit here and tell you that, that I waved some magic wand or whatever, or me, you know, getting on them uh, made them not turn it over. What made them turn it over is they kept it simple and they concentrated on not turning it over. And, and again, young guys sometimes, you know, they get to playing, and, and what happens is, you know, there's a, there's the old story, Coach. Ah, oh, you know, Coach, it's only one play. It's only one play, and and before you know it. You know, it's only one one turner for this guy, one turner for that guy, one turner. All of a sudden, before you know it, you got eight or ten in the first half, and you're in trouble. And um, you know, it, it was a good sign that we were able to cut that number, you know, below half in, in the second half. You, you posed this question yesterday when I talked to you. Is it more impressive that you're uh, fifth or whatever you are, twelve and five? With no double point scores, or more impressive last year that you won 26 games with, with one guy who did it almost every game. I think it's more impressive that we are 12 and five with not one single turn, returning starter, or our six man wasn't a starter last year. That that to me is more impressive than and whether anybody's a double figure. Whether score. anybody's a double figure score or not, or that Sean carried such a big load, part of our load. Sean and Justin carried such a big part of our load last year. I mean, when you think about that, I don't. I don't know if there's another high-level Division One team in the country that's 12 and five that doesn't have one single starter returning, and then you know Fry's really our sixth guy off the bench right now. And well, he you, had one, you had one starter return, Shaq. He's not starting now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, someone who doesn't follow UC, if they asked you who is this team right now, what is the make of this team at this point in the season, what would you say? It's a good question. <laughs> 
You know, I, I think we're um, we're a developing team. That's who I would say we are. You know, Mick said this at the beginning of the year, and, and as a staff, we kind of knew this that we probably weren't going to play our best basketball until end of this month to the middle of next month, and hopefully we can keep improving. Um, you know, that was my message to the team after the game uh, the other day was, hey, I'm, I'm happy for the win, certainly against Houston, but guys, we have, you know, I'm not happy with how we played. You know, we played about a half of basketball, and we got to we got to get better. And if we can keep getting better and keep the young guys, you know, turn those young and experienced guys into more veteran guys by the end and how they play, then, you know, we're – we got a chance to be pretty good by the end, but I would say we're a developing team. That's how you would characterize us. We are a developing team. Getting the best basketball, are you close to that or still a long ways off? Oh, we're a long ways off. I mean, you know, we're getting closer, but we're not we're not anywhere near our potential, I don't think, yet. Jermaine Sanders averaging 12 and a half points over the last two games since he started. Do you think that was a huge confidence boost for him, or did you see that in him all along through practice? Well, you know, he was hurt there during that stretch, and he, I mean, he literally was struggling to run, and that's really more why we didn't play him than anything. And when we struggled for the two games on the road, you, you know, Mick said, hey, we need, we, we talked about it, and he said, let's turn to our senior. You know, let's turn to our senior. If we're going to make a change, and I said, because I, I said, coach, we need to make a change in the lineup, so let's turn to our senior then if we're going to do that. Because Jermaine bleeds red and black. And Jermaine, uh, you know, is a, he's been here the longest. He understands, you know, that hey, the coaches are right. We got to do, you know, what they're doing, and, and he's shown leadership. And so, you know, plugging him in, did I know he was going to average 12 points a game? No, but I knew I knew he would give us really solid play on the defensive end. I knew he would uh, be a guy that would, you know, take good shots and make smart plays because he is a veteran and. You know, he's made some shots, which makes it, it makes it even better. When Mick said, "Let's turn to our senior," is that what you had in mind too? Yeah, no, I, I, I had. You know, we had talked about it after on the after the loss on the way back on the plane. I was talking to a couple of the guys on the staff and just saying, "Man, we've we, we got to change. We've got to change. We got we got to make a change here." And, and I think Jermaine's the guy that's got to go in. And then you know, we got back and, and talked about it with Mick, and Mick agreed. You know, agreed. And, and I mean, I, I didn't say, "Hey." I'm, I'm suggesting Jermaine. He said we, we probably should turn to our senior, don't you think? And I said, well, that's what we were thinking. So, you know. There's an old expression out there. I think it's a Jerry Tarkanian that says, uh, the more thoughts in the kid's head, the slower his feet. Have, have you done things to try to simplify your offensive approach to the game so that the athletes can be athletes? Well, I think what happens with a young team, and, and again, a team that hasn't, you know, Again, for six of our guys, this is the first time they've, they've ran any of our plays, they've done anything. So as the year goes along, and, you know, we add a wrinkle here to now and then, but we're, we're at a point now where we've, we've run the same things offensively for a while now. So they begin to get better at it. And then they can begin to look past the first option. They can, they're more comfortable. They're not thinking about where do I need to go. They're thinking about play basketball. Oh, and this guy's, you know, I was supposed to come off the screen, but that guy's already standing out there. I'll just go the other way and catch it and lay it in. I mean, that sounds simple, but at the beginning, because guys are trying to please the coach and they're trying to do what, you know, they're, just, they're trying to run the play or whatever, they have a tendency sometimes to do that. You know, they, um, they just run the play. They, they forget, hey, let me look how the defense is playing. And as you get more comfortable with running the stuff you're running, whatever it is, then you can begin to not think about just getting through the play and you think about playing basketball. And that's that's what's begun to happen with our team more than anything is we're more comfortable with our offense now, so they're beginning to, to use their talents and skills to be basketball players. And that that's just a natural evolution about any team. That's why when you have veteran guards and, vet, and veterans back and you've got a veteran group, every year you may throw some wrinkles, you may change a few things, but you're going to overall run your package. They already know it. Now you can really, if they really know it inside and out, now you can really begin to to get them to look at some nuances and things that, that help you offensively. How much does it help Shaq's attitude for the rest of the guys seeing he didn't get upset or, you know, pout over it and sulk? He still came out and worked harder and, and said, I'm going to make an impact, you know, any way that I can. 
Well, I mean, you know, when you got an upperclassman that does that, the young guy's got to follow it. I mean, you know, any time that your upperclassmen show, display leadership and attitude and those kind of things, it only helps your team because, again, the young guys are always looking at the old guys. What are they going to do? Now, here's a guy, Shaq, that started for 16 games or whatever it was, and now suddenly he's not starting, and he came with the right attitude. And, you know, so it's hard for a young guy who maybe is not getting to play as much as he wants or is in and out of the lineup, depending on the situation. It's hard for him to say, you know what, here's a guy that started 16 games, he's been here for a while, he's handling it, i got to handle it. Was that an important message maybe at this, you know, as you get to the, the middle of the season and starts to drag on to, to reinforce no, that? absolutely. Absolutely, because, you know, and we never get upset. I mean, Mick says it all the time, and I, 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 you know, as a head coach, the same way. You never get upset with a guy for wanting to play. You want them all to want to play 30 minutes a game. You, they can't all play 30 minutes a game. So it's not you want them not wanting to do that. They have to handle it when they don't, and they have to be productive in the minutes that they get. And, you know, the nature of college basketball, too, is in the NBA, your rotations are – once they get to this point in the season, everybody kind of knows how many minutes they're going to play. And the NBA, they'll take them out because they know they can't play Tim Duncan X, X number of minutes. Whether he's playing great, bad, whatever, they're going to take him out and sit him because they know over the long course of the season because there's so many games. In college basketball, you might play 25 minutes one night and you might play eight the next night if you're a sub guy. And you've got to be able to handle that. And the good teams have guys that can handle it. The bad teams don't, and then that causes a problem on their team, and then that kid's not ready to play, and you know all kinds of stuff happens. But so far, our guys have been pretty good at handling it, and hopefully, you know, we can continue that and embrace it. And just you got to be ready when your number's called, because your number can be called at any time. It happened last last game. We got two, or both of our two guards got in foul trouble. You know, guys playing the two, and, and you know, Data had to play in the first half a lot. Had to play well, so. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what guys get getting hurt. I mean, Troy freaking goes for that ball, and the guy lands on him. I'm thinking, holy mackerel, what are we going to do here? We got, you know, <laughs> we got our, our 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 secondary point guard is is in foul trouble, and it, you know, if he don't get up, you know, we'll, so. But anyway, coach, any any plans to open a Twitter account? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. You have to take on whether Tom Brady I'm, I'm, I'm too crazy. I'd, say, I'd get upset and say something. I can, you can't pull that back. Do you have a take on whether Tom Brady intentionally deflated the balls? <laughs> Did you guys see the New York Times with the picture? Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, all I can say is I don't think it had any effect on the outcome of the game. And... You know, I mean, that people want to write news stories and, and that kind of stuff and be diabolical. I mean, I don't, I, I doubt that he did it or had knowledge of it. And my, my guess is, if you want my theory on it, is they had those balls at the minimum line. It was a little bit cold that day, and as we know, with tires in the cold, some of the air goes out. And you can say, well, you know, I, but I, I can guarantee you that I know I'm. Their organization, because they're because that that guy's a smart coach. He's looking for every advantage within the rules that he can find, and I'll guarantee those balls were on the minimum. If it was 13.1, that's the minimum. They were 13.1 and not an ounce more. <laughs> and then it got cold, and you know they dropped. But who knows? In terms I'm, of, I'm worried about beating Central Florida. In terms of a conference championship, I'm sure that was one of your goals beginning of the year. You want to defend home. You know your home turf, and you want to grab a few on the road. Is that fair to say that that's emphasized for this game? Yeah, you, you know we got to get a road victory. We don't have a road victory in the conference yet. I mean, this is a huge game for us. You know, every one of them is huge, but this one we got to get a road victory in there, well, you know, against somebody. And you know, Central Florida is certainly a very capable offensive team, so they scare you. But yeah, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be in the conference hunt for the championship, you got to win some road games. You got to hold service at home. Can't lose any there. Or maybe one, but you you gotta you gotta go on the road and steal some wins. You guys win taking the team to Disney, huh? You guys win taking the team to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking the team right back to the plane and getting back yeah. here, resting, resting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing.